What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Game Informer Show, a weekly podcast covering the video game industry. Join us every Thursday for a discussion about the latest gaming news, reviews, and exclusive reveals alongside Game Informer staff and special guests from around the industry. I'm one of your hosts today, Alex Van Aken, and today I'm joined by Marcus Stewart. How are you, Marcus? Hey, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's all Good. about video games. Uh, it is. It always is. Uh, there's currently like tornado weather outside of my ha- my house, so mm. not as beautiful of a day in my neighborhood. But it's a state of mind. Yeah, you're right. You're the right. The neighborhood of your mind. Mm, yeah, the you mind know, palace. You, you put your sweater. You take your sweater off. Yeah. Take your shoes off. Come in. Down to couch with your puppet friends. Yeah, I don't know. You play Final Fantasy or something. I never. I never watched uh, that show. By the it's way, it's my favorite part of. Mr. Mr. Rogers. Rogers. Wait, I'm sorry. What? You've never seen Mr. Fantasy. I've never seen a single episode of Mr. Rogers. How is that? What? That's weird. Is I think I've seen an episode of Mr. Rogers. Yeah, that tracks you though. For like to the end of time. You play probably. piano a bunch, and I feel like piano people <laughs> like. Isn't it? Is it a musical? No, it's like a. It's just a kid's show. I mean, there's musical numbers occasionally. Like, but I it's feel not like, like theater slash band kids love Mr. Rogers. <laughs> I, I just have that. In I my don't mind. know the correlation there. <laughs> and Charles yeah, I, is like at the intersection of those two points. Wow. I mean, Charles, I, did you get I into don't music because of Mr. Rogers. No, I. To be honest, I don't think much of Mr. Rogers. I don't. Wow. Know if ever, I don't know if I've ever had a conversation about him before. Except for like that quote that goes around every nine eleven. I mean, I know what he looks like. Wait, yeah. what's the what's the nine eleven quote? Uh, like when when horrible stuff happens, look for the helpers. Yeah, so it's Mr. Rogers That's a good quote. quote. That's a good quote. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, Charles Howard is here, by the way, everyone. Oh, hello. Hi, Charles. <laughs> My intro was gonna be bringing the GI show from Ohio. But then we started talking about Mr. Well, Rogers. anyways. Yeah, no, kind of <laughs> Mr. Rogers, yeah. Yeah, That's that was... Mr. Rogers would introduce himself if he was from Ohio and was on the GI. He would politely yeah. clap at that because he's too nice he to would. say what he really thinks. Yeah. Um, what a nice guy. Rest which is why he's a treasure. Alex, go watch Mr. Rogers. It's on PBS still. It'll I'm never good. leave PBS. I'm going to watch it's more just... of the Fallout show. Thank you. Very similar. That's kind of the opposite of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. <laughs> Well, I watched I watched the first episode of the Fallout show, and mm-hmm. like like an hour ago on my lunch break, really good. I haven't seen it. Okay, then I don't want to spoil it. I plan to. I okay. just haven't. I, I but I'm I'm glad to hear that you like it. It seems like that's the the consensus, which is it's, a nice surprise. Yeah, it's it's nailing the pulp tone. Like the it's like one minute you're laughing, the next you're like, oh my god, like. This is awful. Um, yeah. Are you a Fallout fan in general? I am. Curiosity? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I was talking to somebody yesterday. Um, I was actually doing work for a, a freelance client um, on my day off, and uh, I was like filming a commercial with them, and they were like, "Have you seen the Fallout show yet?" Because they know I work at Game Informer, and uh, this guy kind of went on this long diatribe about like Fallout lore. And uh, it's it's integration into the show, and it just made me realize like there are way bigger fans out there of Fallout than me. But yes, I am a Fallout fan. Yeah, I would say I'm a long sleeve shirt to reveal he's wearing a pit boy the whole time. Yeah, like he's a Fallout sicko. I would I'd classify him mm. as the guy I talked to yesterday. I, I'm just a fan, you know. Um, sure. But well, you need the mutation that makes you a sicko. You're you know, right. You're you right. That trait. Yeah. 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 yeah, but it's real good. Charles, you've watched a couple episodes, right? Yeah, I think I'm like, I've watched four of the eight episodes. Okay. I really like it. It continues to be good. Um, it One makes me kind of wish you could like play as a ghoul in a Fallout game because it's got such a cool ghoul character. I just mm-hmm. like his vibe and all that. Um, and two, I really like... <laughs> The gore is like always out of left field. Like there's it's not a horror show, so there's not they're not like ramping up the tension into it. It's just like combat will pop off and people be fighting and then like someone's head will literally explode <laughs> the way in yeah. the game. You just shoot people and they randomly explode. It is like It's just like the world they live in. Yeah, it's so perfect. Yeah. It's the effect of the nuclear fallout. It just made bodies more susceptible to exploding <laughs> mm. from a single bullet. 
exactly yeah. yeah yeah it's it's pretty gruesome uh and creative in its gruesomeness which i really appreciate yeah um, yeah the ways I, i'm in which, enjoying it the ways in which people use weapons and i won't spoil anything because you'll watch any episode and you'll immediately know i'm just constantly caught off guard by the delightful ways in which uh I, guess I was gonna say the delightful ways humans can die it's a really dark dark tone i'm bringing this episode i brought up 9 11 and gory deaths yeah jesus dude Jeez, yeah. well you know it, it, it sounds faithful to the game because i mean all of that could apply to the, the fallout games like they're some of the best moments in that game are not even just like the how fun it is to i guess blow people's heads off but just how wacky it can get and just like the emergent stuff where it's like oh you're just talking to someone and then the some weird death claw in the distance just barged into your moment and like mauled a guy to death and yeah. you're just like well just rolling with this i guess uh, there's so. there's really good moments as well as like callbacks to the game so like when characters take the stem packs it's like the same sound effect from the games nice. um that was one of the things that the sicko told me about and i and then i i noticed <laughs> it uh today um and even just like the way like that characters are like looting other characters essentially like it's like you kind of see them in, at the end of one scene like looking over a body and like grabbing stuff and in the next scene they're in new clothes and it's just like oh they just totally just equipped that and uh there was one more scene oh shoot it wasn't going to be a spoiler but it was it was uh dang it i'm i'm totally blanking i feel bad hit boy vault For, boy I'm just okay yeah Fallout yeah go through oh oh, oh that actually helped <laughs> there you go um <laughs> like i saw it on twitter um and, and and i see like i saw like a clip of it today but like the there's like uh the brotherhood of steel is in this this series right and you know in the games right like you are you're carrying around all this power armor and stuff right like you've got inventory you know you don't want to be over encumbered in the show they like have to like figure out a good way of like well how do the yeah how do these big power armor knights get around like with all their stuff and it's like oh yeah they have like you know these squires who just like are their they're like uh like minions. caddies they're caddies like golf caddies yeah. carrying the, their stuff around just a lot of stuff um that that is real fun and uh and his callbacks to the games and uh even if it's not necessarily represented in the game is like well thought out um in terms of like how it's portrayed on film and like how they make it believable it, it's it's cool so far i like it a lot nice. where i thought you were going with that last bit was i thought you're going to say there's a scene where a character gets over encumbered and starts walking slowly <laughs> and that's like they're like oh wink nod. like yeah Ella pernell puts like one Tran like can in her pocket and then she's like oh and she's just like yeah. dragging her feet in the ground <laughs> maybe I mean, i'm a, i've only watched the first episode i mean this, in, in the sense that when you carry i i would say the squires are all over encumbered they're just carrying these huge bags they can barely keep up that's that's what it feels like yeah over encumbered mm -hmm. with the the hierarchy of how that that world works yeah know? man it keeps everyone down yeah i haven't watched it yet i've been too busy watching uh i've actually been re-watching the 90s x-men show so oh yeah because i want to watch mm. x-men 97 and i had this moment where i almost jumped right into it but then i knew that i my memory of the original show especially how it ends is it's very fuzzy like i grew up watching it loved it but i have not watched it since it was originally on and i was like oh do i want to jump into x-men 97 with like a like a cursory memory of what that show yeah. happened in that show like i remember specific episodes but like the through line is that just on disney so Disney Plus? Disney Plus, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, my mom's watching X-Men 97 because my mom loves... My mom's a big nerd, for those that don't know. Like, she still watches cartoons and stuff now and, like, loves comic book stuff. And X-Men is, like, her favorite superhero, basically, like, thing. That's and cool. she grew up... She watched the original X-Men show with me as a kid. So when I told her about 97, she was, like, there day one and just jumped into it. And I thought she would rewatch it, too, but she's like, oh, I'll just I'll just look up a synopsis, which I was like, I could do that. But I, I this gives me an excuse to rewatch that show and yeah, enjoy it with my adult brain, which yeah. is good. Like, I'm on season two right now, so I'm blowing through it. Um, 
But yeah, I've, ha I've had to avoid speaking to her about 97 because she knows things mm. that I don't know. And I've heard that episode five, the most recent one, apparently some, some stuff went down. I saw Twitter reacting in okay. a way it was like, oh, okay, things are, things took a turn. I don't know for good or bad, but I'm excited to get mm. to that show. But yeah, I will, I will start Fallout uh, pretty soon, hopefully. I've just kind of been in a big, I haven't honestly been playing many games the last couple weeks i've been in a real movie kick tv show kick um you gotta take a break sometimes yeah yeah and I, I've, I've kind of been in one of those spots i watched yeah. uh uh the civil war movie the alex garland yeah, movie i was talking to a friend about that yeah uh, she said she liked it did you like it i liked it a lot yeah i've heard good things about it i'm i'm not sure if i'm in the mood for something that dark right now that's fair she, I've, I've heard like she was saying like i really liked it but i had to turn away from the screen because she saw it in theaters and i did too like, I, yeah i had to turn away a few times because of some huh. some stuff that happened i guess is it i'm gory trying to or? think what what is it about uh so it, it's about um it's like set in the future but like it's like our world but like set like 20 30 years ahead yeah and they reference things and like escalate things that are happening in like today's political climate um and it follows a group of journalists who are i'm not gonna spoil like what they're trying to do um but like very early on in the movie like they reveal like their motivation for wanting to essentially go into this dangerous part of the country that's currently like a front line um to get like this last because the state in, in the movie the state of journalism and media has just collapsed and the media outlets are just fighting for scraps and yeah. i think of bearing the lead alex like the in, the entire country is in, engulfed in a second civil war <laughs> well yeah i figured that was that was okay you know. no i i actually didn't uh, i was confused i thought that was the name civil war was <laughs> evident i mean well yeah, I there's like marvel civil war that's yeah. not north versus south <laughs> or anything. i didn't yeah i didn't know what nature the civil war right was. right right but so no, yeah. america is an american civil war. america fighting itself so it's yeah, california and yeah. texas have band together which which what a is wild pairing that, that is huh? wow. i think it might be like the director's <laughs> commentary on like uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I've been are thinking about the, that more. Are they the good guy? Like, are, I, I don't know if there's good guys in this They movie, actually, I think they... In the right? They don't really dive into the politics all that much. Of, like, okay. it's like subtle. It's not the focus. Right. The focus it's, is yeah. the well-being and the, uh, of the, the... The main characters. It's really all about, like, journalism and photojournalism and amidst conflict and, like, war journalism and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff um okay and yeah it, it it's like the the civil war that's happening is like on the periphery i, I mean it's it's not even that's unfair to say it is all over the place but it is really like the people along the way that they encounter and like these smaller uh scenarios that that occur amidst this civil war um, you know, what's, what's, what are people in the country, you know, they, how do they, uh, like in the suburbs, how do they, are they acknowledging the civil war going on? Uh, what about like some of these extremists that they come across or, uh, you know, people who are maybe just choosing not to believe it's real. Um, all, all of this, all of this is kind of at play, uh, through the lens of, you know, uh, veteran journalists and newbie journalists that are kind of going together through this story. It reminds me in some ways of Children of Men. Um, oh, yeah. I love that movie. Yeah, that's one of my favorite movies. Uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it's like as dire as as that movie. It's more, it's more popcorn flick than Children of Men, right. which is just like depressing People. and awful. <laughs> and I mean, like that movie's more or less about the impending extinction of humanity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, it's not as dire. I mean, it's dire, but it's not as he you don't walk away feeling as heavy. You yeah. walk away feeling like, oh, that's a really good movie. Like that, that uh, I love the way they portrayed like photojournalism and, and implemented it in the movie. It's not like you walk out just being like, I'm depressed. Everything sucks. That humanity is 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 it's, doomed. No, we'll never have babies again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but like that is feeling that of like that chasing feeling that tension throughout the movie that that is in children of men like that 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 like 
you know, the sense of being followed that it's not necessarily a plot line, but like those tensions that are in children of men, I find that there, there's a similar tension in civil war. Um, it's is good it shot. At, is it shot as well as children of men? When I think about uh, it's really movie. well shot. Okay. Children of men, amazing cinematography in some of those scenes. This, made, I would it say, helps make- feel like you're constantly like you you're holding your breath constantly yeah uh I, that's one of the things i remember most about that movie is just some of the shots in there it's like oh my god oh my god <laughs> uh there's some really good shots in this one um okay and they do some I'll cool stuff with like because they're a lot of them are uh kristen dunce plays a photo yeah, Kristen Dunst. so like they yeah. in, they implement photography in a cool way um yeah, it's a good movie. I highly She's recommend it. She's writing about why she'll never be in Spider-Man 4 or do any superhero movies again. Yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah exactly. Yeah, right there, byline. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Um, so, I, I haven't been playing as many games, but I've been watching Fallout Show. I've been watching, trying to catch some movies here and there. But um, before, I, I, we should get into video games proper. Um, I know, Marcus, you're going to walk us through our... Our countdown to Summer Game Fest. Do we have, have like an official jingle for that? Like a clock sound or something? Like, uh, I, I thought of the 60 uh, minutes clock sound, but that's like too serious and, and also copyright. I'm thinking probably. like, um, <laughs> you can't, uh, you can't copyright the, that. Like a death, a different a, clock. A very menacing like death now, like, dong. Like a gong? Yeah, just like, like something a, that like, like, like rattles a, like a you. It's about to start. Like, something that like puts a, puts a chill down your spine. The countdown to summer game fest <laughs> you're terrified like it's it's coming winter yeah uh, but b- before we get into that summer is coming before we get into that just want to shout out uh if you want to support us please go and get a print magazine subscription uh it's 19 dollars 91 for uh for now that is a sale uh i believe it's 24.99 once the sale ends um the sale is going to be valid for at least a few more weeks i believe uh so 1991 Get you 10 issues delivered to your mailbox over the next 12 months. Uh, averages, uh, averages about like every five to six weeks to get a new magazine. Um, and if you want to sign up sign up for that, go to subscribe.gameinformer.com. Uh, if you subscribe now, I think you still have time uh, to get the Star Wars Outlaws cover uh, story. Um, so if, if that's something you want in physical form, you're running out of time to, to sign up for that. Um, at a certain point, you'll be your your first issue will be uh, our unannounced next cover. But uh, yeah, subscribe at GameInformer.com. Nineteen dollars ninety one cents, ten issues a year. You also get access to the digital version of our magazine, and uh, that helps us keep the lights on. Uh, so we appreciate it. All right, let's get into our SGF countdown, Marcus. I'm gonna toss the baton to you. What what's the landscape looking like? What do we got coming up? I mean, obviously we've got SGF proper Summer Game Fest. Uh, yeah. We've got we've got you know some of the regular big hitters, but walk us through everything. Yeah, so Summer Game Fest, of course, is the first and foremost. Was the first one that was announced. Is actually probably the first thing happening that we know of for now, as things are gradually getting announced. But Summer Games Fest. Um, at least uh, I feel like the the actual showcase itself has a name that I can't remember, but you know, hosted by Jeff Keeley, that'll be taking place on June seventh. Uh, we don't know what'll be there as of yet, but as you've watched in the previous years, it's you it's pretty much become the uh, replacement E three, the new E yep. three. Which actually now this is the first year where E three is officially officially dead because you know it was. You know, the last few years it was going to happen, but then it got canceled. But now this is the first year where we're, we're coming into this knowing, like, nah, this is no E3. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that'll change. I wonder how that will change the show, if anyway, in terms of, like, will it have even more than it normally has? Because now that's, like, the new sort of, like, epicenter of game announcements. But, you know, that's usually the... Uh, the big one and it's it's like the sun where there's it's got a v- bunch of other smaller events that sort of orbit around it that's under the sgf umbrella but ah, who knows what to expect i mean summer games fest has usually been pretty good for like big surprises and mm-hmm. like reveals and updates is there anything that you guys want to see there or either expecting to see just right now i 
I have a thing I want to see. I'm I'm going to this summer game fest. This is the first time I've gone to like oh, yes, right. a, a big industry event, which I'm very excited for. Oh wow, congrats. I uh really want Keanu Reeves to show up. He's <laughs> 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 gonna cast his shadow. Uh he was there back in Cyber for Cyberpunk and that was kind of legendary. So if I got to go see Keanu Reeves, who is like like uh, people like him for his performance in Cyberpunk. But I really feel like that appearance at E3 did a lot to like set himself as this like legendary figure for what? games media specifically. Of like he, it was it was the wildest thing to happen to be like Keanu Reeves is in this game and he's in this room, um, and I would and like he's to adorable, that. and he's adorable. He pretty much became the internet's boyfriend because of that <laughs> showcase. Uh, like funny enough, Charles, you, uh, a fun story. So I've. Uh, that year that Keanu Reeves did the, his Xbox appearance, that was the one year that I did not go to the Xbox event because oh. I had gone to previous years like to E3, but then also going to the Xbox showcase, whatever it was. And that was the last one that they did, I think, because I believe that was 2019. And that was the last E3. So yeah, it would have had to have been. Um, and I I had an invite to go, but that year, because they're fun to go to, but they're not ideal to like work at. Like mm. I see, I always see people there with their laptops doing, I don't know how they do it to me. It's like, if you're going here, you've committed to not, like you have someone else at home base doing it. So I would just go there and to just watch. But that one year I was just like, ah, I don't know if I feel like waiting in line and doing all the rigmarole this year. And I, and I had done it already. So like the novelty was gone. You know what I mean? So I was like, yeah. Yeah, I think I could sit this out this year. And then I'm watching it from my hotel room and then Keanu Reeves shows up and I'm like, I could have been in the same room with Keanu Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never That's forgotten that of like the one year I don't go is when he shows up. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm checking an embargo uh, to see if I can say some stuff. So I don't want to say it yet. I'm going to confirm while you run down the list, though, Marcus. Of Yeah, I mean, uh, in terms of what I'm hoping for off the top of my head, uh, geez, I mean, there's, like, some long-lost stuff. Like, I'm going to go, like, swing for the fences of, like, give me, like, a Doke V reappearance. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah. let's bring, like, bring back the, like, long-lost stuff. Let's, let's see a trailer for KOTOR remake. Like, I'm just going <laughs> to say things that aren't going to happen. Um, maybe... You know, we're recording this before the uh, Nintendo Indie World Showcase this week, but like, how if it doesn't show up tomorrow, which honestly, I, I don't think it will. Doke V? At no, 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 no. Oh. Hollow Knight Silk Song. Okay. I mean, Doke V won't show up tomorrow, so that is also <laughs> correct. Um, Switch indie game, Doke V. <laughs> yeah. Indie. Uh, I mean, not, technically it would be indie. It doesn't Pearl Abyss publish her own stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, but uh, if, if, you're listening to this Thursday after the Indie War Showcase and there's no Silk Song. It seems like this is the last summer that that game doesn't show up in somewhere. Like, I don't think it gets past another summer Games Fest or summer in general, like all the showcases without popping up at one of them. And if it's going to show up at one of them, you would have to assume it's Jeff Keighley's thing. So God, yeah, I'm going to say think. now that that is the ceiling, like that is the last stop. Like it cannot go further than this summer for that game. Okay. Like this is it. End of the yeah. Road. It feels like it. Mm -hmm. Especially with like, you know, more ratings popping up for that game. Like, you know, like the Xbox store listing that, that, you know, got populated. I, it feels like things are moving again. The gears are starting to turn again. The, the engine is getting ready to to maybe ignite and take yeah. off. So um, Got to clear the silk. There you go. The, yeah. The web. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Doke V is a really good one. Uh, I want to see more of um, not black. It's the fall. It's the it's Pearl of Speaking of Pearl Abyss, uh, not oh, uh, black Crimson Des desert. Crimson desert. Yeah. yeah. The one that will almost certainly come out first. Yeah, absolutely. Out of those two. Yeah. Uh, I would like to see either of those. They both look uh, interesting to me. Yeah. Um, and then I'm I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, the SGF always has like a really good at, at play days, which is like the the media only invite uh, event. They usually have like a really good selection of indie games there. Uh, I saw a really cool one last year called Schlem, 
Uh, there was that Time yeah. Flies game last year, I believe. Yeah, well, that was two years ago, actually. Two years ago. Was, oh, wow, that yeah. That's when I went with you because I didn't go last year. Yeah. So, yeah, um, and, yeah, there's always something interesting there. I, I got to I, – I got to play another crab's treasure there for the first time last year. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just Henry Halfhead. Um, yeah, they usually have a good showing of games on top of like big ones. I, and I'm curious, like if, if since, you know, like you said, E3 is officially dead this year, officially, like if there, I wonder if last year the show, like the play days stuff would have been bigger. If you got to imagine like, publishers had committed to showing their stuff at e3 well i think e3 died too soon last year because the, the, the word around that game was that they took too long to reach out to people and confirm like mm. are we doing this so i yeah. don't know if anyone really committed because they were like i don't even know if they're we haven't heard from them so i we don't know what yeah plan for. i just wonder if that affected yeah. like participation from bigger players or not sure um, whereas maybe this year it's a little clearer like what what that picture looks like maybe we get more um yeah more participation from big publishers um, i mean we probably got kojima in some form right just the, it's just the the jeff keely bingo his best card. friend is hosting it yeah he's got yeah. three games he's working on that yeah. we know of i mean Death what do we know two. we know od death Stranding two what's the other one um visit the, oh his, oh his, his, his yeah. new stealth espionage game that he's doing for oh, i think that's that's not the Xbox one, right? Is I think OD no, is the OD Xbox is one? the Xbox yeah. one. Okay, the yeah, physics, the whatever I guess for everybody. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so God, it's hard. Not it's to way too. It's up way up. too early to see the espionage action game, but it's probably Death Stranding. Yeah, it's Death Stranding. Like, it, you know. If, um, but yeah, yeah that's got to become. That's got to be coming soon. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Even if it's nothing, he's gonna have a. 15 minute segment on stage <laughs> to yeah. just talk and then you go like oh my god kojima and then by the time he ends he goes what did he actually say what did, what did we learn from this yeah other than that he's 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 good at what he does <laughs> so yeah but yeah that's summer games fest uh after that we have the gorilla collective which is um hmm. it, it's really just like a, a series of events it's almost like sgf where it's like there's the gorilla games like showcase which is the main thing um, but then they have a uh, smaller events that are part of the collective, like uh, Black Voices in Gaming, uh, Dame for Games. Uh, it's probably like one or two I'm forgetting. Um, but that collective runs from June 7th to June 10th. Uh, but usually the, the Gorilla, like I guess, showcase proper is usually worth watching. Usually it's a lot of indie yes. stuff. Yeah. Um, usually pretty packed too, from what I remember of, of previous years. So. That'll be happening there. Um, IGN Live will be going on as well as June 7th through, I think, around the same time frame, which is, I was afraid of IGN, like, I don't think they have, like, one single showcase, right? I feel like it's, like, a series of, tra like, reveals over those days, but not one, like, central show, right? Uh, I, I think they have, they have had a show in the past, because I remember okay. covering it for Fanbyte. Yeah, um, I don't... I thought, yeah, I don't, I don't know if like that's, I don't know. They change it up every. I don't know what. Yeah, they might have this changed year. it. I just yeah. know they did in 2022. Yeah, I yeah. mean this year it's like a, you know, for like people that are there, it's like an event. Like you go there, you hang out. They have like activations and, you know, you, demos that you can play. It's like a, it's like a fan fest. Um, but in terms of it, like, is there a, like a single show where you see stuff? I, I'm not totally sure about that. Um, but there will, you know, there will be premieres throughout those days from them. So, you know, it's always worth keeping an eye on their channels if you want to keep up with like every little thing that comes out of this summer. Uh, yeah. June 8th has the Future Game Show, which we had the Spring Showcase a couple weeks ago. A uh, Future Game Show, another big one that I always watch because there's usually like a lot of big stuff that pops up there again from indies. Um, they had a, the, the Spring Showcase. I don't know if you guys watched it, but there was a lot that came out of that. So I wonder what they have left for the summer mm -hmm. since it, it, not a ton of time between them, but you know, a lot of games get made, but I, I usually look forward to watching the, the future game show. Yeah. But you guys, uh, yeah, there's always, there's always typically really good stuff. They also, a lot of these like usually line up with like steam next fest. Um, yeah, usually. Yeah. And I would imagine there's a summer game fest edition of steam next fest happening. Um, 
Oh yeah, that, there's that's usually typically like, how it goes. Everyone gets it on SGF, like Steam, yeah. or, like PlayStation Store, like there'll be like sales and, and demos and stuff. Usually yeah. all all the storefronts. And typically, the stuff at the future yeah. game shows is pretty good about having demos out for people to try. Um, yeah. So that that's the most exciting part for me because they're usually smaller uh, indies, but like but like you know quality. Um, but I feel like that's where you get like the weirder games like and i mean that positively like oh more, yeah the uh, you know more not creative like yeah like, for oh, lack I of a better word yeah like unique yeah, like, unique yeah. unique artsy whatever you want to call it yeah yeah eyebrow razors the good stuff um, <laughs> the good stuff yeah um the next one that was actually just announced today as we're recording uh the pc gaming show confirmed their day good date. yeah that'll be uh, that's June always 9th. a favorite of mine uh, yeah, that one's it, it's weird. This is the first year that like I always watch the PC gaming show either because I've had to for work reasons or because I'm like just as a sicko. Like I, yeah. I think we all probably treat this time of year as almost like Christmas. We're like, oh, I'm going to watch everything like when, before I got into games media like this would be like like ether showcases whatever around it, you get friends together and we're like we're gonna watch all these and be like oh my god can't wait for that to come out yeah uh so it was like part of that group for me but now this is the first year i can watch it with a like actually good like powerful pc because i bought like a my first mm. like real gaming desktop last year yeah so now i can be like oh i could actually like play some of these all right yeah, yeah. like the, the exclusive ones at least um which usually the pc game show is mostly exclusives um, but yeah, this will be the 10th anniversary of the show, apparently. That's what they're billing it as. Uh, so that'll be happening June 10th. I have no idea what they could show in terms of like PC exclusives that I know of on the horizon. I mean, I'm sure there's stuff, but I'm just like... I think we could probably get like some cool updates, like maybe some 1.0 announcements for some early access games. Um, I... That's typically like a good thing that they do. I don't... I also don't think it's like strictly... Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, last year they announced. I watched that one for work last year, and they announced Citizen Sleeper Two during that show, which was really cool. Yeah, um, but I don't think right. that one's going to be like a PC exclusive necessarily. No, so no, 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 no. They'll definitely all come to PC. I think also, I don't know if it was a reveal, but I think they were showing off that Dune game, Dune Awakening. Um, yeah, I think so. I, I, yeah. I didn't care because I hadn't seen either of the Dune movies yet. And now I've seen both of Dune movies, and now I just want to play that game. Now you're the biggest Dune fan. Exactly. I'd love to okay. see Dune Awakening. Uh, I got a like a behind-closed-doors preview at PAX East um, for that upcoming MMO. It looks like, uh, for listeners familiar with Star Wars Galaxies back in the day, like community-driven MMOs rather than, like, uh, the theme park MMOs that are like popular now, like WoW and FF14, where like you can kind of go and do whatever you want, and you it's super easy to get a group because you just hit a button and you're there. Uh, whereas like back in the day, it was like, uh, you know, very much like this server is having a moment because this group of people stumbled on this group of people, and now there's like this emergent thing happening. Uh, they're trying to get back to that with Dune Awakening, uh, which is really cool. Uh, so I, I I would love to see more of that. I would love to see like a public beta uh, or a private beta announced, um, closed beta rather. But uh, that would be cool to see. I'd love to see. There's a couple of PC games that I've had my eye on. Uh, Manor Lords is a. That's got a lot of buzz around it. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it actually comes out this week. I believe, oh, or next week, the 26th and early access because it's coming to Xbox Game Preview. Okay, okay. It's yeah, yeah. part of Xbox Game Pass. And then the Steam release is like the 26th, I think, yeah. I, as I guess. Um, 26th I, is what our, our listing says. Yes. I would wager. Yeah. Now, it might be at the Xbox Game Showcase. I bet they'd try to get in on it. But if not, I could see it being at the PC Game Showcase, uh, uh, like a new Power World update. Mm. Uh, I could see that happening. Yeah, but, I could see that. Yeah, or maybe like uh, what's that? Uh, Palea, maybe like an update for that. Uh, yeah, is that not out? Out? No, it's like well, is it it's still in early. I thought it was out technically. I don't. It's it's early access. Uh, okay, I, I thought it was. There's so many games like that that are in early access that I get them mixed up. Like, is that one not just 1.0? I yeah. thought it was, but 
I guess it's on Switch. So it's like, oh, if it's on a console that does not have an early access program, I Halia's? assume that... is? Oh. Yeah, it's on Switch. Yeah. I think it's still early access. I thought. Yeah, they brought it's it to Switch uh, a little bit after it launched, launch, but I mean, who can say other than Google? Uh, <laughs> but... yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's in, it's in, as of August, it was in open. Paleo launches on Steam on March 25th. Oh. Yeah. Huh. So it's 1.0, right? Hold on. I'm going to go to the Steam page right now. We're going to do some journalism on the spot. Paleo. Journalism. <laughs> All the hot, where you come uh, from, hot Galia news. Oh, okay. Huh. Yeah, it's out. Yeah, that's what I was like. That's what I thought, right? Isn't it just out? Oh, I Alex, totally missed watching, that. You've been watching too many movies. You can just, just You're, I t- I've been wanting to play scene. this. <laughs> uh, I liked what I played in, in early access. I, I just I just didn't want to deal with their launcher. Um, mm-hmm. Well, now it's on Steam. They brought it to Steam. Okay. Yeah, what? So you, Where? it's on Steam and Epic, so you can just Dude. play it on one of those launchers instead of theirs. Oh, now. I know. I, I was on a I was on a work trip overseas when it launched. Mm. That's why I missed it. I was because when I'm on my yeah. work trips, I am not good about keeping up with stuff. OK, yeah, for those that know, no, Paley is like the Breath of the Wild farm survival game. Yeah, like, imagine Power World if you took out the pals and it ran better. Mm. <laughs> That's <yeah>. more or less. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Um, uh, I'm going to reach out about a code for that. I want to play that. <laughs> but yeah, the last game or, or the last showcase that is confirmed for now is Ubisoft Ford. That is taking place June 10th. Uh, they have not said what they're going to do, but we would almost have to assume that we see Assassin's Creed code name red there, which is the one set in Japan that they're working on. Yeah, uh, that's probably my only like the only thing that I would bet money on seeing is that uh maybe uh we see star wars oh yeah probably star wars outlaws too yeah that's a good point um and then like maybe we see maybe or at least get like some lip service to the other assassin's creed game like uh or games like codename hex which is the one i'm honestly the most interested in that's the one that's got like the weird like kind of like slavic folklore witchcraft stuff tied to it like i want to see what that's all about um and then there's one more that i don't remember i think that might be the uh the live service one Oh, uh, yeah. Infinity or... I was going to say right? Infinity, but that I sounds... Think, I think yeah. that's what... I almost said Unity, but they, they did that. That's a different thing. Uh, I think it's Infinity. Infinite uh, Nikki? Or in, in, <laughs> Assassin's Creed Infinity, Infinity Nikki. <laughs> yes, Infinity is what it's called. Um, there's also Jade. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Jade is yep. the, mobile the mobile one set in China. Yeah. I don't know if... Yeah. It, that's the one I'm like, a... why are you doing this? or like why why is this like i don't know if i want to play a full-size assassin's creed game on my phone because that's what it is it's like we're making an assassin's creed like traditional assassin game but on mobile but i was like i if you made like a mobile version of it in terms of like it's designed for mobile like oh it's a smaller bite-sized thing Mm -hmm. cool but not like an open world assassin's creed game on my phone is like i do i want that (laughs) yeah or at least also on pc maybe i don't know i i have a, a backbone controller which you can like snap to your phone so i'm hoping to use that to play it assuming i assume it has controller support i don't know why i, I would assume but um, yeah yeah, that, yeah uh do you guys think that with beyond good and evil 20th anniversary collection <laughs> no being a thing because that well let me look before you before you poo poo this because that doesn't have a release date yet and they still have only barely acknowledged it like they only acknowledge it because it leaked and they have to come out ahead of time be like yes this is real but then after that they've kind of left it alone so we still don't know when it's coming out or platforms even though clearly one of them is xbox <laughs> um so do you think this is where we hear about like that officially of like yes here it is, it's happening. And then also after that, they say, by the way, we haven't forgotten about that other thing beyond good and evil too. Cause to me, it's like, there's no way they could have the balls to announce a 20, to even utter the name beyond good and evil and not have some answer for what's going on with that sequel, right? Like, you know, people are gonna ask about it. So they have to be like preparing a, some sort of update about that game when they talk about this right what, what is the there are they like remastering or remaking the original one or it's what? a remaster it's not a remake okay, okay. so it's which is weird because they did that hd like xbla 
re mm -hmm. uh, remaster back like well it was over 10 years ago it was like 2011 so so this is like a more remaster it's like remaster -ered again um but like not a remake so it still looks like like same character models and stuff mm -hmm. uh so right you think right i want to I see it i i still remember that like weird like gameplay they showed of like it, it was like years ago too yeah it was like, I, w I was at that e3 when they showed yeah. 2017 or 18 with the monkey and yeah 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 uh -huh. Yeah, I would love I would I would love to see it. I honestly I don't know. I feel like it's I, I also feel like Ubisoft specifically is so bad at keeping secrets. Like I feel like <laughs> pretty, especially when it gets close to a showcase. That's when Yeah, <laughs> I feel like it leaks all the time. So the idea that they would act that this game would actually be somewhere in a presentable state and we've heard nothing about it would be kind of weird to me. But I don't I would I would like to see it. I guess that's my take. Yeah, I mean, I think we would all like to see it. I think we, we've all would, would have liked to see it for years. But like, man, I just, that's like my only hope. I, I think the 20th anniversary thing is like, that's cool. I don't know if I'll replay it again, but it is a great game. But like, I just, I, I can't, they, it cannot be that tone death. But like, if you're going to say, if you're going to do anything with this game, you better have some sort of response or, or, or answer to the question of what is going on with that sequel because they've never it's never been canceled officially mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we assume that somewhere in ubisoft montreal or wherever it's being made there is a person at a computer modeling <laughs> jade's face as we speak <laughs> so do we have to call joseph gordon levitt because he was also part of that e3 thing he, i think people forget. he's personally does he's he know wrong. yeah that was also a weird yeah part. i remember that and that i remember the, they did that whole fan thing where yeah. they're like yep. the fans can help make the game or whatever that I forgot what that program was called. It was you could uh I believe you could submit artwork like posters. Yeah. And, uh and also songs? I forget. Or I, I mean think all it, of that stuff is on flash drive. Because Joseph Gordon Levitt <laughs> is known for like his music. And it was like it was called like record. Is it hit, record? Is, hit record, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm on the uh, official website. This oh. this is journalism. Wow, um, journalism right their last, over, journalism. Yes. their last blog update was uh July twelfth, twenty twenty. Um it's later than I thought, honestly. Well, they were basically like uh we've been giving you updates for the past three years. Um but now we're concentrating on core development. It was basically saying like we're not gonna leave us alone. Yeah, we're not going to do as much stuff. At least I think that's what this is. I don't know. I'm doing a podcast. I can't read the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, I think it, at the very least, I think more than any other Ubisoft like showcase year, the likelihood of seeing that game again is the highest this year because of that uh, remaster being announced. Sure. Um, so, yeah. And then maybe because things work in threes, Prince of Persia remake talk. We got two Prince of Persia's announced this year one came out one's coming out this year at least in early access is this where we do a hat trick and say hey same time remake here it is again or at least hey this is still happening you know yeah i mean they've definitely been like trying to wet the palate and uh get people hyped for prince of persia again i mean you gotta think at the end of that is like a triple a fully blown out 3d prince of persia game well i mean you you might hope we'll, we'll see <laughs> I, guess, I mean i yeah. i've been i've loved like uh, that they're doing like these these 2d renditions i think like i just love seeing those are perfectly valid persia. as games like just yeah keep around. pumping keep pumping those out if you want uh yeah it, it just give me prince of persia like this year has been great because we went a decade of no prince of persia to suddenly getting all of the prince of persia <laughs> just out of nowhere and again, I used to go into Ubisoft showcases every year for the past decade in the back of my mind, hoping like, did they say the name Prince of Persia at any point and being consistently disappointed? So I've been very pleased this year. Uh, so yeah, maybe, who knows? But that's it for the announced stuff. Of course, there's the usual suspects that have not, at least as far as I've seen, confirmed anything. There's, you know, Devolver, Direct, whatever wacky thing they do this year. There's like the uh, Day of the Devs usually happens. Uh, Tribeca has done their game spotlight every year where they usually have their Tribeca game selection uh, and do like 
interviews and highlights there. Uh, the Future of Play Direct is a big one that comes every year at this time. The Wholesome Game Direct, uh, too. I love so, that. Yeah, we st- and then even like the individual ones, like Xbox hasn't announced theirs yet. Um, Capcom usually do- does one. And yeah. so, yeah, there's, there's a lot. Was that last that. year or the year before we got the uh, Ghost Trick uh, Phantom Detective the, the shown off? Remaster? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was last year because it came out last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think yeah. it was already announced, but I think they like I remember them showing it off after the stream. Oh yeah, it they was. They played like, it. <laughs> the the showcase was like a bunch of that was like the weirdest showcase ever. Capcom last year because they they showed a lot of Ghost Trick where it was like okay this game's already like I'm excited I hadn't played it I wanted to play it but I hadn't really shown anything, and then they did like that weird fake out trailer for that. Sp- Game oh, with the girls. Yeah. That's when they announced that it's delayed to question mark. <laughs> the big reveal was like, they're like, we don't know when this is coming out anymore. And like, yeah, a cinematic so trailer funny. just to break your heart. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. So I guess yeah. that game, maybe we'll see that game this year. I think year. that showcase was bad from what I remember. I think we all watched yeah. it and we're like, oh, we, yeah. Why did we all watch this? <laughs> like, there's like nothing here, basically. So yeah. hopefully it's better if they, if they do one again. Cause, you know, they, you know, the, the studio specific ones usually pop up during the summer like rgg usually does their their summit the last two years grasshopper had one for the first time last year mm. which mm. that wound up being a whole lot of nothing either uh, annapurna usually has one uh so yeah a lot of stuff to come but uh those are all the confirmed ones and yeah i'm you know it's it's a weird it, it's it, working in games media it's like on one side you're excited because again this is video game christmas but then on the other side as an employee having to write and cover everything it's like we're all like the jordan peele sweating gif (laughs) of just knowing how much work goes into this every year yeah and you're just like all right it's time get ready (laughs) you know the the plus side is it's like whenever you have a job there's always stuff even if you like the act of the job there's always going to be like versions of doing it where you're like not as in it like sometimes you're writing up news and you're like i don't know what this game is but it's important so i'm gonna write it but i'm not like personally excited about it right the nice thing for me with the big showcases is like at least even if i'm working a ton i am excited about this like it's not it's not as hard to write about stuff where i'm like actually super invested in it sure it's like okay there might be something here that catches your eye and you're like ooh, i want to write about that yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, that is a uh, SGF Watch uh, 2024. We'll be, I'm sure, we'll be checking in in the weeks to come as we get closer and closer to the to the the, the summer of fun, as they say, as yeah. I called it. Now, now everyone's gonna start saying the summer of uh, summer of fun. It's a very creative name. It's gonna catch on, I think. It's gonna catch Marcus. on. Yeah. I should hope so. It's pretty basic. Yeah. It's gonna be up there with Hot Girl Summer, and everyone's gonna. It's gonna be all over TikTok. What, what do you say it was called yeah. again? A summer Wait, of Fun. Uh, you already forgot. <laughs> 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 Evidence that it's catching on. It's gonna be Summer storm. of fun, fun, Summer of Fun, the Year of Shadow. Uh, <laughs> summer of Fun, Year of Shadow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Year of Waluigi, probably at some point, right? I, I like that. You know, yeah. he's Switch he's Two not, launches as the the Year of Waluigi. That would rule. That would rule. I take it. We I need a year of Wario. Is what we need. Mm-hmm. Sure. Next in line. Am I saying <laughs> sure? You're not enthusiastic about Wario. Wario gets a lot. Of, he gets stuff all the time. While Luigi gets nothing. We need a Wario Land stat. I mean, we have like three of them. I mean, a new one. I, I'll take a new one. That's what are, I mean. What was the last one we got? Like, exist. Shake it or uh. Well, no, that's yeah. Wario. Where I'm talking about. You talking about a proper platformer? Like I'm Wario, talking about Wario Land. Wario, Wario Land, shake it. You, that's a proper one. Yes. Oh, we? No, War, you're saying Wario Wear. Wario Wear is shake it. That's a Wario Wear. What is game. Wario, Wario Land? Or Land. The actual Mario platform. No, Wario is... Land, shake it. Was it Wario Land? Yeah, Wario Land, shake it. Am I insane? I'm thinking like, wasn't the last Wario platformer Wario World for GameCube? The one before that, I think. No, no, there's a Wii. Wario Land, shake it on Wii. Oh, okay. I see it now. I didn't play this. I, yeah. I might have assumed it was because of the subtitle that it was a shake it. aware game. Nah, <laughs> nah. Which no, no, no shade to the WarioWare games are cool, but like I would like another uh, Wario platformer. It'd be, it'd be cool. To, I, I want the wall, the 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 Wall Luigi Wario platformer. Like 
Ooh. When I used to work at GameStop, me and my manager had a night where it was dead and we were just like talking about stuff. And we were like high, like pitching the idea of like, you just do Wario, Waluigi, like Super Mario Bros style, but like a twisted version of it. I love and that. He said the, he had the best idea and it was like the simplest thing, but he's like, you know what they should do? Because you know, they're like backwards version is that in that platform, you go from right to left instead of left to right. Whoa. And I remember just like staring at him wide eyed, like, whoa, you sir are a genius like that should be the core of the game is that you go backwards the other way and whatever else you want to fill it with sure but that should be like the core thing to immediately make you go whoa this isn't your granddad's mario <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh, make it happen nintendo please also, we probably should mention our likelihood of a nintendo direct in the summer probably i yeah. would say probable yeah there there's is usually a moving target in the summer it's like it's not really always in june sometimes they yeah. wait till like july or whatever but it's like you know in the months around it they'll have something you think they finally show off the switch too i feel like they have to they, what else? they don't have nothing else scheduled for this year and granted yeah. that's not unusual for nintendo they'll they're more than any other they'll come out and they'll be like oh there's they have nothing for fall and then they'll be like here's three things coming out in like a few months that you had no idea we were working on yeah and they're like, oh, well, they just filled their holiday schedule uh, within like seconds. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you never know with them. Hmm. Last year, it was June 21st that they did theirs. Okay. So a little bit after. Nice. Uh, well, one video game I have been playing briefly this week. Uh, I got access to World of Warcraft, The War Within, uh, which is wow. the, the um, upcoming uh, expansion uh, the the kickoff of a new trilogy of expansions um and so yeah war within does that imply that this is also a civil war uh i don't know i couldn't even begin to tell you <laughs> world of civil warcraft <laughs> i think we're we're going crazy inside crazy. of azeroth i believe the journalist like, inside of azeroth it's about to... like the first section the first expansion <laughs> focuses on like dwarves and like underground and the earthen, uh, which is like a set of like ancient dwarves. Um, yeah, I believe you. Yeah, yeah. I the lore of WoW is is a spider web, uh, yeah. and I've I've long long ago lost track of what's going on in current WoW. But I still play. I still have fun. Um, and the the big, it's a typical expansion. There's gonna be. A lot of new zones, uh, level cap is increased, new new abilities. Among those are these new hero talents um, that allow you to kind of further hone your specific class fantasy um, and, and like allow you yourself to like further customize and separate yourself from other characters of the same type. Um, so for instance, mages, right? Uh, long For a long time, um, I mean, since the beginning of WoW, mages could be frost mage, fire mage, or arcane mage, right? Uh, and as much as like they've experimented with what are in those talent trees since WoW launched, those they have remained those core three, right? Um, some of the some of the other classes have had bigger shakeups, but uh, at the end of the day, like you have these pre-existing talent trees. Um, after you hit level 71 in the new expansion, you will unlock your first hero talent. And I think there's up to 11 hero talents that you can select. Um, but uh, they are essentially like kind of doubling down on. So let's say um, you're a fire mage, right? Uh, you can, these hero talents allow you to like, um, essentially you could become a frost fire mage where all of your... Like your fire spells are now replaced with frost and fire, mm. um, or there's they mentioned uh, one of the fire mages could get this ability. They said you could unlock it very early on in the in the hero talent. Like it could be the first one you choose, level seventy one, where when you're casting um, a fire spell, you summon like a phoenix pet to kind of join the call and like help you as a pet and like fight with you um hmm. and phoenix force the phoenix force that that's exactly what it's called i do want to look up um 
uh, hero talents. I'm gonna see if they which ones they've they've uh, they've published so far because there's been some blogs and stuff. So okay, I mentioned uh, mage. Um, mages can get frostfire. They can get sun fury. They could be a spell slinger. Um, druids could be keepers of the grove, which are like more like n- very nature forward. Uh, you could be a loon's chosen. Um, these are all, these don't mean anything. These are proper nouns for people who don't play. Wow. Um, but like each class, I mean, the druids have druid of the claw. That's going to be more, uh, beast form focused, like, uh, and, uh, you know, shamans can be storm bringers or far seers, or they can double down on their totem usage. Um, evokers can can turn into there's like every every single class has like these further specializations i think that's what i'm trying to get to uh it's hard to talk about wow it's hard to talk about talents within (laughs) wow and explain it in a concise way but there are 39 new talent trees essentially coming with warcraft through these these hero talents if they not make one more just make it an even 40. (laughs) i know right 39 such an upsetting number yeah how many classes are there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen. Three, three for each. Yep. Thirty-nine. Oh, look at that math. Journalism. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Journalism. <baby. laughs> um, and, and yeah, so there's there's just like a lot, and it's actually not three for each. Druid has four, and warlocks have two. But, oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, then there's no excuse. There's no excuse. Um. That was me journalism in journal your journalism. Oh, that's so true. I have found a breakdown of the druid druid uh, talents real quick, just as an illustration. So druids can be um, feral, balance, or restoration. That's like been the, the druid way. I used to be a resto druid. Those are like healers. Um, balance druids turn into these big big uh, moonkins, which are like these antlered owls. That like specialize in arcane magic, um, and uh, feral were were always like the tanks. Like they specialized in like really making their animal forms beefy, um, and and you'd always see them in those animal like their cat form, like slashing people, or their bear form like snarling. Um, so two of the four blizzard, or two of the four druid um, hero talents, a keeper of the grove. Uh, it says, take inspiration from the mighty keepers of the grove to protect the balance and safeguard the dream. Uh, for context, the Emerald Dream is like this this uh, ethereal space that is sacred to druids. Long story. Uh, channel overwhelming nature power into your spells and summon enhanced treants, which are like uh, uh, like the, the walking trees from Lord of the Rings is a good example, uh, to protect your allies and crush your enemies. So you can get... You know, increase mana. You can get, um, uh, you can improve your pets um, with this one. Uh, you know, you get, uh, you can uh, harmony of the grove, which is each of your force of nature treants increase damage. Um, that one's more focused on like your your helpers. Uh, then there's a loon's chosen, which is like you're dedicated to the moon goddess. Uh, you're increasing your control over the moon and the stars. So you infuse your abilities with like astral power and you call down lunar magic from the sky. Um, and a lot of these are, are passive. Some of them are um, are more active. But yeah, you're just like, it's like another talent tree on top of the talent tree you already had is probably the best way to go about it. And it's interesting. It's, uh, you know, some of the some of the classes have, have way more... Um, new and active abilities um there's a there's a evoker which was introduced in the dragonflight expansion last year they're the dragons they have like new active abilities where like their first ability is called engulf and you like uh you engulf your target in dragon flame you either damage them if they're enemies or heal them with if you're if they're friendlies um and you know you can get like these big living flames that you some it's there's a lot of stuff it's too much i think i'm realizing this is like way too big of a, t- a task for a podcast <laughs> I, I think i can you. hear i can hear everybody falling asleep it's just wow's getting even deeper on the hero talents i'll end it there with with that piece 
Um, and they are just really want like, oh, you're a rogue. Oh, you're an assassination assassination rogue. Oh, you're not only are you an assassination rogue, but you uh, specialize in trickery. Or you know, it's like mm. just further deepening that fantasy and like really getting to like what character you want to be. Um, sure. Which is a really cool thing. Um, there are new uh, delves. They are like these. They can. They're designed to be like soloable. You can team up with people, but um, essentially, like when you're running out in the open world in the game, um, they wanted like a. They wanted something to like lure you into the depths, and lure you into like these. They're called delves. They're like mini dungeons that are soloable. You can team up with like NPCs, and you can get really mm-hmm. good loot that way. You can get like really good loot that way. Um, and essentially like, like those, uh, those mini dungeons in Diablo probably it's almost like uh, in like uh, Elden Ring when you would walk into a cave and there's a fog gate and you click on the fog gate and it's a fight imagine yeah. if you clicked on that fog gate and it was like a a randomized customized dungeon for you that you had to go in like an instanced dungeon I should say not not randomized sure. but it's just for you um, and you can go in and there's like a little story there's a guy who will you know walk you through them and, and you can you can kind of, you know, explore more and it's just like a way for them to add some of the benefits of instance dungeons, which like there are a lot of people who love dungeons. There are a lot of people who hate dungeons because they don't want to play with the team. They want to just continue questing in the world solo. This right. is for them. It's like they kind of you kind of get like that taste of what it's like doing a dungeon by by yourself via NPCs. Um if you just want to do them and do it with your friends, you can do that too. But it's not necessarily can you designed not do for that. A, I don't know anything about WoW. Can you not do a normal dungeon by yourself? Or is it just too hard? Last expansion, it's too hard. But last expansion, they introduced follower follower dungeons, which were like, you can do dungeons with a set of NPCs. Um, okay. And like, they'll they'll help you out. like, And you can do it by yourself. And they're kind of, they're still going to be like normal dungeons that like you need a team for. There's going to be the big raid where you need, you know, you got to have real people, but they are like wanting to offer more for, um, lone wolves. Yeah. And so these delves are one of those things. There is a story quest early, uh, in that's in, uh, the war within where it forces you to go do a dungeon. And they said for that story dungeon, it's one of those follower dungeons where so that you can continue. on um so it's interesting they're like really trying to like tackle a lot of concerns from broader player base um i I think one of the cool modes is an arachnophobia filter coming uh Mm. that is going to be retroactive so all spiders in the game past and present will be turned into crabs if you would like them to be (laughs) and why that's really important is the new expansion heavily surrounds this uh arachnid race called the Nerubians. It's uh, so it's so funny how we as a society decided that crabs are better or less scary than spiders because in a way a crab is like a worse version of a spider because it's a spider with claws armored, yeah, and armored yeah. and it looks <laughs> the same like they look identical more or less. Yeah. I wonder but like if, one we're like hell yeah crab maybe because we eat them maybe I was that's just what gonna makes say sense. yeah if spiders tasted good would we be yeah, so well, scared some cultures eat spiders on the regular sure, sure. Uh, and I would like to see if if those cultures are less afraid of spiders it, yeah their, their arachnophobia filter is just the uh, stove oh my <laughs> gosh, less scary when you saute that thing <laughs> yeah um but but I honestly have barely played any of this. Which is why I'm also like start struggling to to say anything of, of value here. I feel like I'm just right, right, rambling. Right. Well, you did you have you had fun with what you played so far? Uh, yeah, I played two quests. It, it was fun. I want to play more. Of your life. Yeah, be, no, but you know, <laughs> it's putting me on the road. I'm also playing in the alpha, so like I'm missing the context of like what the hell happened. Where am I? What what is? There's no cutscenes. Like <laughs> <With> these crabs. <laughs> yeah. Um. But I'm just excited for for this thing to launch later in the year. Um, I'm gonna keep playing. Maybe I'll have maybe I'll I'll walk away from from it in a couple of weeks and have have you know a whole new set of opinions on WoW and and where it's headed. But uh, mostly just wanted to keep people aware that hey WoW is coming, uh, new WoW trilogy. So if you 
if you want to get in on WoW, this is a good time to jump in this next expansion. Yeah. WoW, um, watch. WoW Watch. WoW Watch. 2024. Watch watches. We got to get in. Yeah. WoW Watch 2024. Uh, Hero Talents, Delves, Arachnophobia Filter. I, I, I made it to this place called the Isle of Dorne. And, that's uh, a Game of Thrones. Yeah, it? actually, yeah. Dorne. Yeah, that's a, that's a country. Uh, that's, where, that's where sand snakes live. That's where oh, God. Pedro Pascal is from. Oh. That, is, that is his home country. Yes, this door. Wow. <laughs> he, he claims that on his passport. Hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, but there is, it's, it's, it's a cool area because like, I'm not going to say which city um, because I don't want to spoil people who really care about WoW. They probably already know, but just in case uh, there's like been this long running city in the series um, that's important to the game. And uh, essentially like this area is the ruins of that city um mm. that has kind of fallen apart and it's like uh that's all i'll say but it's cool it's cool, cool. yeah that's wow um i need to play more i saw your face in wow there's no other game i feel that i've poured i have poured three or four thousand hours into warcraft and still feel like i barely know anything about the game isn't that <laughs> ridiculous it's why I mean, no, I you know how much Destiny I played when I used to play Destiny regularly, and I could not tell you anything about that story. I did not play. It's the story. ridiculous. It was just a fun, a very well made shooter that had cool enemies, and but yeah, yeah. the moment anything narrative happened, my eyes just glazed over, and I was like, uh huh, yeah, sure, yeah. I feel like that, but like WoW has just changed so much, like mechanically, system wise. Uh, yeah, I just feel like a stranger to it, despite putting literally. I've got to be like four or 5,000 hours at this point. And that's like rookie numbers for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, but it, it is, game. it's like an interesting symptom of like the of live service games where they're like constantly adding stuff to keep it new. But then if you miss like four months and you go back, it's like unrecognizable. What happened? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's not really a live service game, but like, I don't know the last time either of you guys played Minecraft. Um, Nearly ever actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay well yeah. there's it's a i was really into minecraft in like 2013 and i had it i used to love time. minecraft yeah yeah and it's like going back i like played it a bit a year or two ago and it's just amazing the amount of stuff they add of just like we were joking in the morning meeting today because one of our coworkers has an axolotl as a profile picture and i didn't say it but there are axolotls in minecraft like that's the <laughs> that's the tier list of they've got they've knocked out so many animals and mobs. In this that's game. what that's like, what Mudkip is, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Kinda. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. That's that's how I feel with Minecraft, but I I relate to you. I guess my point. Hmm. You with your grown up games, me with my Minecraft. Yeah, it's good. Um, Charles, you mm -hmm. been playing anything of note? My Minecraft. Oh, Dragon's Dogma Two. Hell yeah! Tell me yeah. about it. Um, I Don't you just mean Dragon's Dogma? That's what the menu says. Yeah, I don't know why the menu says that. I saw someone online say that it makes sense eventually, but I haven't gotten to the point where it, if it would make sense eventually. <laughs> and it was just a random comment I saw, so I don't actually know if there's any truth to that. But, <laughs> it makes um, sense when you uh, check the home screen again to make sure that you are playing Dragon's Dogma <laughs> 2. I did. I was worried. I, yeah. I, I did. I had started the first Dragon's Dogma like in anticipation and uh, the second one does a lot better job of i feel like onboarding you but i knew it wasn't the first one because i just played it but i was like then if this is track is one then what did i just play on the title um <laughs> marcus you played it right yeah I'm, i've put some good time into it yeah alex have you checked it out at all uh just i played it uh substantially for an evening or two and then i went on two weeks on a work trip and mm -hmm. uh and just that, completely that fell job. off i'm gonna i'm gonna come back i'm gonna come back mm -hmm. but I, I should probably just like start over sure yeah i will so i i put it on this week's roster because i talked about it a little bit when jesse was on i haven't really talked about it since then but i played i think like 50 hours of it and i Ooh. think it's my it's my game of the year so far uh -huh. <laughs> with, with the caveat I have not played Rebirth. I have not played Like a Dragon. I did not finish Persona 3, and I have not finished Prince of Persia Lost Crown. <laughs> so four of the biggest games I haven't actually touched. But I really like Dragon's Dogma 2. Um, and I think it is 
a really interesting case of just throwing people in a world and like forcing you to or not forcing you to you, you throw people in a world and there are so many like mechanics of that world going on at one time that like so much of my personal story of the game just comes because I'm walking from point A to point B and then just like things are interacting and it just makes it way more interesting. Um, and I wrote a piece a week or two ago about how I was glad the game doesn't have fast travel. Um, right. Which or I, a, a limited fast travel. Yes, and not, not a traditional fast travel. Um, because so much of the best parts of that game to me is you're walking from point A to point B and then just weird stuff happens. And it's given me like a sense of like adventure and expedition. I feel like I haven't gotten in a long time. Um, and I think a, a recent example, I, I, the feeling I get is weirdly, the, I, I keep thinking about Skyrim, which is not a game I think about all that much. And there's better versions of that, but it's it's a similar like, wonder of a fantasy world to that um and the fast travel thing also has me thinking of starfield a lot um because in that game the space travel is for the most part like this weird fast travel system um and that was one of the things that like kept me away from it because my favorite parts of bethesda games is always like you got to go to this place in the distance now walk there and like survive until you get there and it's just like really satisfying to do that yeah i almost was going to say that starfield feels like the emphasis of dragon's dogma because starfield yes. practically forces you to fast travel constantly like they encourage it like you can you can just fast travel to this other side of the city like even within yeah. the cities you can yeah and dragon's dogma is like no there's a cart <laughs> there's a cart there maybe you can ride that's about it yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and uh yeah, I'm really enjoying it. The my like main issue I'm having with it um is some of like the quest scripting is weird where like you'll get an objective and I'll look it up and it's like not clear at all, but there are like other quests you have to do to activate parts of another quest or um you have to talk to someone and it's not immediately clear that the game wants you to do that. Um, so like some of that like narrative stuff gets kind of clunky to me um, there's one quest where you have to like apprehend this guy and they're like he hurt his arm and he's got his hair in a ponytail find him um, and you can like see that there's guys in this crowd that have their hair in ponytails but like when I looked it up eventually like the guy that's supposed to have a, like an injury on his arm it's like not visually clear at all but if you don't do that then like a major character gets assassinated um, so I had to like reload to my last like bed sleeping because I was like, I didn't know who this guy was. And I looked it up and I was like, I wouldn't have known who that was. I was gonna say, right. I, I, it's probably a spoiler. I was like, I kind of want to know what the injury is. Like, what is the, what is the tell that his arm is I hurt? Think, I think he had, a, he had attempted to assassinate a person before and at, like got slashed on his arm. So they're like, know that there's a guy that they're looking for. So it's just like a cut, but it's like, I don't know. People have fur and tattoos. <laughs> right. It's like a minute stuff. detail. There's not like a bandage on his arm or anything. It's like a, a scrape if, you, if you're in the right light. Anyways, mm -hmm. uh, there's another quest I've been trying to do forever. Um, and I keep looking it up and it's like, well, you need to complete these other quests first. And I was like, oh, well, I haven't done those yet. And I keep hoping I'll stumble into them, but I haven't. But mm -hmm. then I also know if you hit certain story quests, it like cancels your progress for side quests because they're kind of like divided into chunks of the game right and some stuff is timed so um i'm enjoying it i feel like i'm trying to do a close play of it to make sure i'm not missing anything but yeah. it's kind of hard to do that sometimes i can say like i don't think the game honestly allows you to yeah be yeah between like the limited saves and the way like quests are on timers like invisible timers <laughs> like mm -hmm. i think I, I don't even unless you just really dedicate to like reloading it constantly it feels like it would bring the game to like a standstill to try to do everything in the optimal way because it seems like things have to go in such such a sequence of like events like you mentioned before of like oh i need to do these other quests that i haven't found to even engage with the one that i have found but you mm -hmm. have no way of knowing that because it's going for like oh, i guess a more realistic thing of like this world operates whether you engage with people or not yeah and yeah we're, i think we're so used to games of like nothing happens unless i say so basically yeah. and it's like you know this little girl got lost and you had no idea it happened and she's been lost for days and by the time you meet the parents they're like hey where's your kid they're like oh she's like dead 
Yeah, <laughs> like you yeah, should have yeah, yeah. talked to me yesterday. I really needed you. <laughs> there was a time I was like journeying across the world and I went into a cave and I found a kid in there. He's like, oh, are you going to take me home? And then he like joins my party and it's like, I have to take this kid home now. Like I could just ignore that he's following me around, but if I ignore him for long enough, he's going to die. So I have to yeah, go. A griffin's going to show up and <laughs> yeah. <this kid. laughs> um, I also yeah. mentioned, I really like the combat system a lot. Um, there's all the different vocations, which is like your your combat abilities. And I was, I've been surprised over and over again by how much I like each one of them. I've done, uh, I started out as an archer and then I switched over to thief. And then I maxed out thief, I maxed out sorcerer, I maxed out mystic spear hand. And now the like one of the last classes you get lets you like mix and match abilities from the other classes to like make your perfect class and you can like switch Ooh. between the weapons and stuff um it's the avatar yeah. at that point <laughs> basically that if if ang had a staff and swords and a double bladed spear <laughs> which he should yeah but yes well, well cool. what's your take marcus i'm enjoying it i i've i haven't put in nearly that much time but i have put in probably like I think like at least 15 hours or so i'm still in the like the the maybe like not first batch of missions because i'm past like i'm definitely past the intro but i'm doing the like oh we gotta do these three kind of involved tasks to go deal with the 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 the, the ruler in that first town where he's like oh yeah yeah first you gotta go kill these guys and there's like three of these and then you gotta sneak into this place and then yeah i'm like doing that so i did the like to kill the, the the goblins or whatever from like the three spots um which took a while because everything takes a while in this game because you got to walk there um so now i'm about to do the, the the other two but you know in between that doing like whatever side quests that i find and stuff like that i i, I do like it i feel like i have to be in a certain mood to play it because of mm -hmm. how much time you have to spend prepping and also not having the option to fast travel which i i, I wouldn't i don't fast travel like all the time anyway it's mm -hmm. usually like the return trip where i start to get yes, the itch yeah. i'm like okay i I've, I've it took me forever to get all the way out here to this objective i've done it it was hard it took a few tries but i did it i've exhausted quite a few of my supplies and i'm a long way from where i need to be it'd be great if i could just fast travel back but i know that's not an option so i got to steal myself for like just the route home basically right mm -hmm. and then for me it's easy to sidetrack like i could just retrace my steps because at least i'll know what to expect but then the moment you see a fork in the road you're like well i could unfog more of this map if i just go here even if it's it's going to take me longer to get back to turn this objective but then mm -hmm. you can't resist um so it's just the time investment and getting into that mindset i it, I, I just need to be in a specific state of mind uh, it's it's definitely not a game i can only play in short bursts it's like i need to play it when i have time to really yeah. sink into it you know because the game doesn't allow like oh just do a side quest and be done it's like eh, yeah you know, yeah yeah it, it's probably gonna take a while uh but i i am enjoying it i i i'm having generally fun i'm almost done maxing out the archer which is what i started with uh so i'm kind of deciding what i'm gonna do now I, i've been looking at the perks for each class to kind of try to cherry pick which ones i want sooner and stuff like that um i like my idiot party of pawns i was gonna uh, ask what's what's your main pawn named garfield and he looks like garfield the cat <laughs> if you if you watch our, our our live stream of me playing you, it's haunted mm -hmm. it, it's it's beautiful he's just really he's good. he just looks like a big thief garfield and he's just really <laughs> really enthusiastic about pulling out every ladder and statue he sees that i can't see which is always annoying. Like everyone can see yeah. things, but you. They're like, "Look at the statue on the horizon." I'm like looking around. I'm like, I, where, what are you look, looking at? I don't <laughs> see it. Like I, I assume it's here. Then you feel like an idiot in your own party. <laughs> like three out of four of us can see this thing. Why can't I see it? Yeah. Especially in the first town, it's like very densely packed, and I feel like you everywhere you oh. walk, they're like, "Lada, oh, yon chest." Me thinks you should unpack it, or is in. Because you always think it's like in front of you, like, oh, they must like see it. And yeah, then it's yeah. like, because there's like verticality in this game, like, oh, it's like a level or two above you. You got to find a ladder and then search around and then find it. And you're just like, how did you even see this from the angle we were walking? <laughs> like, you just sensed it, but you didn't see it. I don't know. I think but. I think what bothers me more than not knowing where the chest is, is when they just go and open the chest for me. 
They're like, nah, dude. That's a whole video game thing. Let me open the chest. Yeah, I actually don't mind that. Cause it's like, if you see it, then go get it. Cause I'm not going to go look for it. Sure, I don't know where it sure. is. Like if you, you go do that like that. And then you get the surprise of like, oh, I have this now, I guess. Mm. Okay, good job. So it doesn't bother me. <laughs> my one thing I did enjoy was they pointed out a treasure chest for me. And it was like up at a place I couldn't get to. So I think what you were supposed to do is like throw one of your minions up on top so they could get it maybe. Uh, I, I couldn't figure out how to how to get it done. Like I didn't have I don't know if I just didn't have enough strength or what, but I just could not throw them that far to go up and, and get this this chest. I don't I don't throw my guys ever, so I, don't, I actually oh, don't know what okay. you're talking about. You can, okay. you can do that though. Like okay. I throw my guys a few times to get them to somewhere, and then what I haven't had happen, but I know has happened to other people is that sometimes they can throw you. But yeah, I don't know like how a, to like prompt a, them to do that. So you know can. The there's like a class ability that one of the classes get oh okay so there were times where like i can't reach that can one of you, like i throw you guys can one of you guys throw me up here please so i can reach that yeah okay i, I didn't know that so like there at one point in time i've used it successfully i threw them on, up on a ledge uh, that had like a tied up rope on it and they knocked the rope down for me so i could climb up mm. the rope ladder but they didn't do that on there i had to like throw them up there uh and maybe there's another way of doing that but there was one that i just couldn't figure out how to get them up on top of so I like Skyrim walked my way up a mountain and just like <laughs> kept like climbing and finding like geometry that would let me uh, climb. And it took me like three, four minutes to like scale over this rock face, but it let me do it. And then I, mm. I got, I got the chest and I was like, hell yeah. I, is it, it worth it? No, but it was cool. <laughs> it, never is, yeah. it never is. But when you put something that I can't reach, like my mind instantly thinks it must be good. Right. Right. And maybe it was. I don't. I don't remember. I, I don't remember it being like riveting. I think it was just more money or something. I don't know. But um, or some like dried fruit or something. Uh, Classic. Yeah. But uh, well, cool. Um, I'm looking at the time. I I think I'd like to get into listener questions now, if that's cool with y'all. Uh, yeah. If people want to be a part of this uh, part of the show. You can email us podcast at gameinformer.com or leave a question in the discord, which you get access to by, uh, by subscribing to us on Twitch one time, twitch.tv slash game informer. That'll get you access to the discord. You can drop your question in the game informer show channel. Um, and this is the part of the show that you get to influence. Um, just like J herb 24 on discord who writes in what's your, fun. what's your pick? For quote most underrated, unfairly maligned sequel slash numbered entry of a game series in quotes. My pick is Far Cry Five. That game has some issues, but the world they built and the style of Montana wilderness and the bonkers religious cult story make for a fun ride. Hmm. I think one that comes to mind is a uh, Batman Arkham Origins. Mm-hmm. I think that game suffers from just being surrounded by near perfection. And uh, like as a result, I feel like people say that game's bad or just like lacking. Where it's just like it's a good game. Like it's a really good game on its own. It just had to follow two of the greatest superhero games ever made in Arkham Asylum and yeah. Arkham City. And it's also like it wasn't made by Rocksteady. It was a uh, Ubisoft Montreal that did it. Um, and it's you know a prequel, but like it was like yes, it was. It was more Arkham City to an extent, you know, it didn't really like it didn't feel like the, the next step forward, but like it told a cool story. And at least for me as a Batman fan, I, I like that the rogues gallery in that one was more like B players or like lesser known Batman villains, because like a lot of the like main event guys are in the Rock City games. So like, you know, uh, uh, Black Mask is the main villain in, in Arkham Origins. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay, Black Mask is a cool character that, you know, again, when you think about, like, the, the big gangsters in, in Gotham, you think of, like, Penguin, you know, before him. But it had, like, Firefly in there and, and like, a few others uh, that were like, oh, yeah, 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 like, I remember them. Or, like, you just don't see them often. So I appreciated that. It also had that really fun uh, Joker dream sequence when he, like, finds his love of batman for the first time like you realize like oh this guy completes me it's like their first like encounter Mm -hmm. uh so yeah i i think arkham origins it's like yes if you stack all four of the arkham games at least in my opinion it's gonna be last 
but that's just it's just the least great out of four great games you that's know? that's a great that's like the perfect pick that's that arkham origins fun fact is maybe it's like up there for the most excited i i, I ever was for a game to come out oh, <laughs> really wow. I was like the perfect age. I was like 13 or something. I was so excited for it. And it came out and I liked it because I don't know, it was a good game. I think it got like middling reviews, but it was like, I don't know, <clears throat> still good. But yeah, I remember like being on vacation with my family in the summer and thinking about like the eight assassins Batman had to defeat on Christmas Eve or whatever the, the day it is. Um, my pick, uh, jokingly ha 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 sonic of the black knight perfect answer <laughs> um, my actual answer uh is always also very in line with charles but i do sincerely believe it um sonic unleashed a... <laughs> i also like that game there is there a... be an argument for that but... there is a lego star wars 3 which is called lego star wars 3 colon the clone wars and it's, oh, uh, yeah, it's yeah. the clone wars tv show um, and it came out, it, I, for some reason, like, flew under the radar. Um, also, like, the Clone Wars show is a lot more, I think, both popular and, like, important to Star Wars canon now than it was when this game came out. Um, but I remember playing it, and I really liked it. The main thing I liked of it, though, is it had this, like, battlefield mode where I think, I'm going to use the word RTS, but I'm not super confident I know what that means. But you you would, it, it was like a versus mode, and you and the other player would be on either sides of like a battlefield, and you'd walk up to these terminals to like claim circle areas, and you could like select units that would like go out and fight the other team. And it was like, it's so wild. Lego hasn't done another thing since then. And I played way more of that than I ever did of, like, the main campaign. You can, like, summon, um, like, the droid tanks and, like, AT-AT walkers and just, like, all this, like, crazy Clone Wars stuff. And then you go out on the battlefield. You've got, like, your five squadrons of, like, 20 clones each. And you're fighting your brother. And it's cool. Mm, hell yeah. That seems like a weird one because I, when I think of Clone Wars, I think of that art style. So like to Lego fi it, it you have to yeah. like rob it of that style because then Anakin just looks like whatever existing Anakin minifig they yeah. already have. They did yeah. match I feel like they matched art a little bit better. Also, like Lego Star Wars one is what originally had like the prequel designs, and this one came out like seven or eight years later. Lego Star Wars one Anakin, like a lot of the characters in the first Lego Star Wars barely resemble those characters. Anakin in particular had like a weird haircut. Um, this one does look, it looks like cartoon Anakin, but just because it's newer and they, I guess, have more Lego ha hair pieces now, it, mm. I feel like it looks a lot more accurate. Okay. I think, uh, for me, is a recent one I've been playing, I think, I think it would be uh, Trials Rising. Uh, I think at the time that came out in, like, peak, like, fatigue for live service games and, like, the loot boxes and all that. And I've been playing it slowly recently. Um, and I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> My <laughs> massive yawn. Um, yeah, so I've been playing Trials Rising lately. And I just feel like that game has a lot of really good tracks in it. Uh, and it is definitely like annoying to deal with the live service stuff. Um, and... Uh, I think like the map that it's laid out in isn't necessarily my favorite. Like the way like you you select the levels and stuff. But like the levels themselves are pretty dang fun. Um, and yeah, just it's another really good trials game. I think like when you get at the core of it, uh, and it was kind of like it definitely was not panned, but it was definitely like not received as well as the other trials games. Uh, but I think if you like get, shuffle past that stuff and get to the meat and potatoes of it. Uh, I think it's a, it's a, it's a good solid trials game. Um, the tracks are a lot of fun. So sure. that'd be my pick. Um, next question comes from Zachary Pliggy. Uh, what would you like to see in an expansion slash DLC for dragons dogma two? or vocations? Honestly, you know what, what I really want? I want them to like massively expand the pawns 
I like I like my pawns a lot. I just wish there was more than four personality types and only like they only have two voice actors. They have a male and female for each pawn. And then they have five settings. So you can just pitch the voice higher and lower. Mm. I would really like if we had just more voice actors and more pawn personalities. So I, I felt like I had more like variation in my party. Yeah. Get Ben Star in there. I want a Ben Star pawn. Yeah. Just put just yeah. put Ben Star as himself in the game. He probably mm. has actually. You should probably check his Twitter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's probably floating in the ether somewhere. Uh, I actually I like really that. like that idea of like, uh, not necessarily Ben Star, but like celebrity slash popular video game character pawns that you can uh, <laughs> recruit. Where like just as DLC, it's like Kratos is in the game, and they get Christopher Judge to just say some weird couple lines Kratos lines yeah I mean even seeing the like people creating other video game characters as pawns or like celebrities as pawns it's got a very like wrestling game vibe or like the creator wrestler <laughs> in WWE yeah. 2K when you go download people's creations and you just see like that's just like a very accurate Conan O'Brien <laughs> and mm-hmm. stuff it's got that kind of vibe of just seeing the weird stuff but like awesome stuff that people are making just like surfing that pawn pool i don't know what i would want from like a narrative aspect um but i don't know like and you know i I, I still have a lot of game to play so i don't even know what i want that the game doesn't have already but like i don't know like a, like a more land masses i guess like a new location yeah, yeah. like 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 give me like a shivering isles style expansion like take me to some weird new place that has like some weird new like kind of pawns you can meet and then yeah like weird weirder monsters to climb up on something like that like just take me somewhere i haven't seen before i think um i think i'd love to see like this is relevant because i've been kind of diving down the fallout new vegas mod rabbit hole a bit lately Mm. and it just reminds me of like the definitive editions of uh like skyrim and when they introduced the like the mod system, like officially, it was like officially supported or like fallout four, uh, I believe had it as well, where you could install mods within the game that were like, obviously had to be approved by, by Bethesda to get in there. But I think it'd be awesome to see that kind of thing applied to dragon's dogma. Um, I, I would love to see that. I don't know if like how, how Capcom feels about mods, you know, but like, I know, you know, I, I have seen so many Leon Kennedy's, wearing like <laughs> mini skirts or whatever you know uh there's definitely like a, a modding there's mod support out there right for the pc version uh of those games i would love to see that for dragon's dogma i think that'd be cool um and to see like capcom support it would be awesome i think i think the one the one issue i foresee there is because they have microtransactions for some stuff they'd mm. probably be like I don't know how they would regulate that, but they'd be like, you can't mod in this stuff we already have microtransactions for. But I guarantee the most popular <laughs> Dragon's Dogma 2 mod is fast travel. Hmm. Um, That's a good point. It's only a matter of time, right? But yeah, I don't know. Uh, here's here's what they should do, Alex. They should do your idea and then stop, stop charging people for <laughs> uh, items in the game. All right, yeah, I like that. <laughs> um, well, cool. Um, Let's uh, let's kind of wrap up there. Uh, we got a couple other questions we will save for next time. Um, I just had some stuff that has that has come up. I need to need to get off get off air um, and, and handle. But um, let's uh, let's let's sign out. Let's close out. I do want to shout out Print Magazine subscription again. Nineteen dollars ninety one cents. Ten issues, just like the one Charles is holding. Um, wow, oh, you're throwing them. Charles, those are those are like two dollars a piece through the nineteen dollar and ninety one cent subscription. What are you doing? That's a good one. Hey, I I went I worked on that one. Charles is showing off the Apex Legends one. Now we've reached his music books, and I'm wondering if he's going to start throwing those in the ground. Yeah, he's pulling issues from all corners of he, his he's, room. He's he's got they're everywhere, uh, and that could be you too. For nineteen dollars and ninety one cents, uh, get the print magazine delivered to your mailbox. Uh, don't forget to go and follow this crew here on social media. You can follow Charles at Charles at Chuck Duck three, six, five and follow Marcus at Marcus Stewart seven. And you can say hello to me on the internet at it's van Aiken. 
Uh, head over to GameInformer.com slash Star Wars Outlaws for all of our ongoing coverage surrounding our current cover story on Star Wars Outlaws. Uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Appreciate it. Uh, and we will we will see you next Thursday. Bye. Yeah.